So let's give everyone one or two more minutes. Hello, hello. So did we ever figure out who is the actual host? Is it you, Cheryl, or is it someone else of the actual uh, Zoom? Uh, Taylor is probably uh. the person who can, if you have any questions to do with the Zoom, she will have all the passwords and everything. Okay. <coughs> hello, hello. Hey there. Hey, hey. Oh, you know, at the top of the agenda, we should make a, an announcement uh, <laughs> about our technical lead, now that that's been formalized. It hasn't yet. Amy told us she would be getting back to us, like the votes and everything have passed, but I haven't seen the official thing. There was. There was. Uh, there, there's a blog post as well. I, I don't there's want to see it. Was, also, Amy, Amy sent the uh, follow-up email, so I can actually link that. Yeah, and I saw you merge the PR as well uh, to make it to make it real in our GitHub. <laughs> Um, I'll gladly at this. Find a oh, link so Bartok doesn't have to. Bartok to, for making this after already doing all the work expected of a tech lead to also get the badge of honor onto his forehead. Um, yes, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Let's, let's make some work now. <laughs> yes. We have a special guest today. We have Cheryl here, um, VP Ecosystem of CNCF, also responsible for the end user surveys. As most of you probably know, there was an end user, observa uh, end user survey on observability. That's a tongue breaker <laughs> quite recently. Um, and as a result of this question, I was kind of wondering why is stats rated as highly as it is? And it feels kind of unfair picking out one specific project, but as Prometheus literally started in part to, to replace stats everywhere, uh, it, it feels kind of fitting to, to call it out. Um, and to try and get a better connection to end users and their actual needs. Like it's it's fine that we as, as project maintainers, as SIG members and such spearhead the way for, for where technology can go, but it's also very much about enabling end users to actually take that and use it. Um, and obviously like there is this whole discussion about many people see, see observability as a cost center. So not as something which drives innovation, but just something which you need to have like, I don't know, toilets or, or elevators, like it's, it's infrastructure. It's supposed to come out of the wall and else no one cares. Um, and we can't change those settings, at least not immediately. Yet there is probably some some space into which we can into which we can try and move. So, for example, what uh, what Cheryl and me talked about was um, maybe having a survey sent out to the end users about their main pain points. What could we do to support them? Like one example would be applied prompt of, of and then just give them like five or ten different things, maybe more five thing side. Uh, which the end users can choose what what gives them the most benefit, what what eases the most pain. Deliberately not free from for the users, because we kind of need to spear it where it makes sense to go, but then basically have them um, be able to choose what they want. And that's why Cheryl is here uh, to talk about this. So now I'm shutting up. 
I thought I was just here to listen. Um, oh, okay. But yeah, but I'll, <laughs> I'll just say two minutes on it. Um, the reason that we created the end user technology radar that I just put into chat so you can read it, um, I guess there were two reasons really. One was to show, okay, what do end users really use and what do they recommend? So just as a report, you can look at that. But the second reason for it was to force more interaction between end users and the SIGs and the projects. Because there was a feeling that these two groups are very divided and don't talk to each other enough. And ultimately, we're supposed to be making people's lives better and solving people's actual problems. So my goal with this is not, as Rich said, like, I think it would be a great start to ask end users like, hey, what could SIG observability work on or provide or, or help to make it easier in the observability space? But I think I'm also interested in hearing how, how can we keep this an ongoing conversation? So it's not just like have a survey and then we vanish and never want to talk to you again. Okay, that's my bit. So I know what I think and I know what Cheryl thinks, but what does everyone else think? Nothing? No one? Okay, then <laughs> the result uh, of this. Hi everyone. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. My name is uh, Tota Norwitz. I'm uh, uh, using the opportunity also to introduce myself, uh, I'm from, uh, I work at uh, Logs.io, so uh, that's my uh, relation to the uh, domain and to observability and specifically to, of course, uh, for CNCF related uh, projects and so on. Um, I, on that respect, I think that this is something that we've, uh, I personally saw, uh, have experienced, I think uh, all of us who are at Logs.io, this, uh, uh, you know, maybe uh, lack of uh, communication, not enough communication amongst, um, amongst the different projects and the, the different SIGs and the different, uh, let's say, uh, the different uh, activities and different uh, pillars as they sometimes call them. So definitely uh, welcome. Uh, we need to see what's the effective way of uh, establishing it. So this is, that sounds like a, a good start. I would uh, maybe create some follow-ups on that, uh, Cheryl, if, if, I, if I may suggest, to see maybe uh, practical means of, of creating an ongoing uh, facilitation of this, uh, these interlinks. But uh, definitely on the one end, the industry does uh, converge. We specifically at Logs.io uh, put a lot of effort, putting a lot of effort on creating these bridges between the uh, disparate uh, projects, you know, uh, Grafana and Kibana and Jaeger and uh, Prometheus and uh, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, but then again, we often don't find the counterparts for that. And we definitely would like to see that as a, as a community activity, community engagement uh, to, to have that as part of the ongoing discussion uh, and maybe also st standardize the way that these uh, interact. Like uh, classic examples would be correlations, you know, uh, log trace correlation, metric to logs and, and so on. These are classical things that uh, uh, people uh, oftentimes mention, but uh, but bringing that uh, into the the community discussion, the SIG discussions, is uh, is vital in my opinion, and uh, definitely welcome the activity. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, I I just wanted to chime in as uh, as someone that was an industry analyst for many years, covering this market. Uh, when I kind of look at the result of what was recently published from the observability, I guess what I'll call the radar or whatever, sorry, I forgot the tech name of the publication, but it seemed pretty misleading because you have all these companies kind of like tweeting this out. And then when you read the methodology behind it, I mean, it's 30 companies with a couple hundred respondents of what they're using for observability. And I don't think it's a very good reflection of the reality of what many of us see across user communities. Um, and so I was a little bit um, disappointed, I guess, at the results and how it's being construed. 
by the mark by the um, by the community, I guess. Um, but I understand it was um, first attempt at something like this, and I think it's an important thing for the community to do and produce. It needs to be uh, broader in terms of data collection if we're going to make some type of recommendations as to what users should be assessed and implementing and using. That's all that I wanted yeah. to chime in. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. I, I think there's, this is mixing at least two things because with my sick hat on, uh, it's very much about leading the way and about enabling uh, end users and others to, to use certain things. There is the survey is more about what are people, what is the current state of the world. Um, there's some more about uh, the background of the mythology in the uh, TOC recording, which just uh, finished. So you can uh, watch this and I highly suggest this because uh, Cheryl answered quite well to, to a few of those points which you just made. So I highly recommend uh, watching that recording, the TOC recording of today's date, just one hour before. It, it's somewhere in the okay. TOC. This it will be, it, it should typically be out later on today after post-processing of the video and it will be posted to the YouTube channel for the CNCF. Yeah, I'm sure I'll see it. Cool. Sorry, I missed it. Yeah, thank you again for the feedback. Um, I think at least uh, one thing that popped out is the statement about what should people be doing. I think both within the SIG, given the membership here and, and the charter of the SIG, um, we very much don't want to be prescriptive about what, what specific technologies or, 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 or things people should use. Um, I think it was more, I don't, I don't want to speak for the survey, but um, I think it's more about capturing what people have reported that they are using. Um, and, and granted, I think uh, one thing that we, we ta had talked about last hour is what could we do in this SIG to help uh, broaden the, uh, the, the scope of the, 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 the survey and, and how do we capture people's experiences and what drives their decisions, uh, what, you know, what the requirements are and, su and such. Uh, and so that was one topic I wanted to bring here today to brainstorm around and perhaps uh, in our next meeting um, have some proposals around, you know, how, how can we better engage with um, industry and with folks that are using perhaps CNCF tech, but likely lots of other things as well. And so if you have any um, suggestions about how to, how to provide a broader sample set, um, more data is generally better. Um, yeah, that, that, that was also my comment. So, uh, and I, I, I like the activity overall, as I mentioned uh, before, I think it's good that we're moving in that direction. Um, but Cheryl, as I mentioned, great work per se, but having a sample set of 23, is some, definitely something that needs to be worked on. And I think like putting my vendor hat on for, for a minute, um, the CNCF is very public, broadly publishing. This is the state of observability. And then you're basing it on 23 companies and 30 respondents within those 23 companies um, is um, a bit of a bold statement. Let's put it that way. Um, it's, it's totally fine that in a toy like approach, it's end user driven, not vendor driven, like a lot of other activities out there. Um, but you mentioned before that in the future, there will be more possibilities to engage a, a, a wider audience. And I think it's just a mismatch of when I look at on, on, on Twitter, how it is published, what it's representing versus what it's actually representing. And that, that might give you some hiccups uh, especially from, from, from the broader tooling uh, community out there. Um, that's maybe the only attack point, but still, I think it's also up to this group to find a way to, to broader reach, reach out here. And you mentioned before that with some one month's head up, heads up, I think it's fair that also other tools and um, other providers in that space are in, engaging more with their communities and invite them as the RSCF member to, to push this in there. I know there's always the balance and you say, okay, you don't want vendors to push all their Sorry, friendly I'm, customers I'm towards voting in one direction. I'm going to make a point of order. I, I understand concerns all around mythology and mythology. I agree that more data is better than less data. 
um, I understand why especially many vendors would like to, to see better representation of what they themselves are selling and why there are strong incentives to get into those things. Yet, as the person who invited Cheryl, I don't want this to be uh, a sick call turning into, into complaining about uh, a specific survey because there are channels for, for giving feedback about, about these things and such. And, like especially about the amount of data, but again, I highly recommend anyone who didn't. I know Alois, you were there uh, to watch that recording, but I don't want this call to turn into Cheryl bashing because that's not why I invited her. And I feel like a really, really bad host if 50% of what we now talk about is basically people complaining. Um, so maybe for for the context of this call, can we pivot away from from all of this more towards how to better engage with end users and, and how to make the ecosystem wider and broader and, and positive things. Yeah, I just have to intercept here. This was not bashing. This was just sharing opinions. And you have been on this call. I said it's a great move in the great direction. So, uh, but I'm totally supporting on the point how we can and broader engage with the NSA community. And again, I'm, I'm deliberately engaging with this one. There is always the difference between sender and receiver. I understand that you phrased this as, as an opinion, yet for me as the one who invited Cheryl, it very much came across as, and you were not the only one making comments in this regard. Anyway, uh, the point of- So, so, maybe, order, so maybe in the, in, the, in the interest of moving, of, of moving forward, I'm actually curious uh, not to call you out, uh, uh, Jonah, but I, I think it's probably safe to say that the, the bulk of the folks on the call uh, are of an engineering uh, sort of bent or discipline and soliciting feedback and doing market research and or you know, a, a survey that would be much more broad um, that we as a SIG might undertake. Um, uh, that's a discipline just like engineering or, or product management or anything else. And I'm an engineer enough to know uh, that I don't know some things. So uh, not, not to put you on the spot, but if you did have any feedback about how to go about. Uh, yeah, yeah, know, for sure. Uh, I mean. Do, doing that, we, we're all ears. <laughs> uh, that would yeah, be great. I mean, I I would create some type of survey that obviously everyone has input into what we would ask and how we would ask it. And then we would obviously have to collate all of that data and create both the access to the raw data for anyone to do the analysis should they choose to in the spirit of being completely open, uh, but also some maybe some of our assessments as to what the data is telling people in terms of maybe where they are today in their observability journey and maybe what they're looking at and where they're going because the ecosystem is evolving extremely quickly and it's very hard to keep on top of even just what's going on within the CNCF around observability. So I think it, it'd be nice to give users an understanding of maybe where they are and, and where they should be or could be going with with regards to their open source adoption. And then the question is, do we include vendor technologies in there or not? And that's where it becomes a bit more interesting, questionable, you know, whether we keep it straight open source or whether we include vendors and see what the patterns and trends are there. But I think uh, that would be great. Yeah. And, and sorry for making the phone call of order again. Um, it's like, we, we are not here to, to debate specific end user service and their methodology. I understand the desire and the need to, I absolutely do, but this is outside the scope of the sick call. Within the scope of the sick call and the reason why I, again, personally invited Cheryl to be part of this and which, which is why I'm feeling bad about basically inviting her to a place where people complain. And again, uh, please watch that recording because part of your questions were answered there. Um, let's pivot to something positive on the status quo. And Fair enough, looking. just answering Matt's question, that's all. Yeah, yeah thank, you, thank, you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm taking some notes. Forward. Yeah, thank you for the, the feedback. So anyway, looking forward in a positive manner, what specific things should or could we be engaging with with the end user community? So uh, I do have a 
it's, it's a few questions uh, which are well phrased and which which like don't don't steer users in a certain direction but still show what we as as people who hopefully yeah. know where this is going think they might be interested to go but what other things could or should we maybe be doing i have a proposal or a, a concrete idea and 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 it might seem silly but to your point both jonah and others um this whole space is evolving extremely rapidly uh in the last two weeks i've had a number of calls with um commercial vendors because again at least within, within my own company we have you know a lot of teams just use a, we are polyglot to an extreme and we're working on consolidating things but um I've had discussions with a number of what you would call like tr more traditional vendors who have within their companies uh, open source um, contributors uh, to CNCF projects like Open Telemetry and Jaeger and things like that, uh, but um, and, and others. And I've found that even when discussing with them, they actually are a little bit behind in some cases of of knowing what's new and what's happened in the last quarter or the last half year. So. It, what would folks think of the SIG curating sort of like a, an activity stream of sorts? Okay. I want to be careful, though, that we don't apply a big filter on it or it doesn't turn into advertising. But, you know, I don't, I don't know what the right format is. Maybe like a, a cadenced newsletter or, uh, or updates from, from the SIG or, or if it's more just like a, like, I don't want to say a Twitter feed because that's the wrong term, but, but some way to, to keep the community abreast of like what new projects are there. You know, this, this project just released a 1.0 GA or, or so, so something like that, or, or, or new integrations between tools. Or it, I, I don't know what the right packaging for that is, but, but that general facility of, 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 of providing you know, current events. Maybe you got some. Go ahead. So maybe, maybe Cheryl, you can share what um, what the methodology was for in, engaging end users and what the challenges usually are. I know myself, it's like like you get like surveys, you're not necessarily feeling massively inclined to to answer them. And maybe there's something that how maybe some other work or some other activities can help to engage more people. Because I think that's the part we agreed on. And Richie. You can tell me to stop uh, if you think it's out of um, of the context here. But how we can engage the broader end user community to provide their feedback? I understand it is like super hard, and like from getting services uh, surveys myself, how many do you answer? But maybe if you, if you can share some of the, the challenges that you had and where people um, might be able to help. So I do appreciate all of the feedback that people are giving and. Richie, I also appreciate you standing up and saying this is not why, um, it's not Cheryl bashing. Um, I, what I want to say is that I, my role in this is to set and run the survey, but I think to get the questions, get that information that you're looking for, I think you need to be building the personal connections with end users because it's not something that I can I can report things that I've heard, but I want you to actually meet those people and dig in a lot deeper. Um, I definitely couldn't give you like, okay, here's five issues that people want fixed. Like, that's not something that is my, it's my position to say like, on behalf of all end users everywhere in the world, this is what they want fixed with regards to observability. So I do want to figure out like, and I think this comes down to how much work you are willing to put in, not you personally, I mean, the group is willing to put in to connect with people and build the relationships. And that's why I don't think that there's a standardized methodology where I can say like, just do this and end users will give you this. And to build on this course, I think this is the very simple and super hard answer to what Alois was asking, how to get more people to reply. Well, give them some value for replying. And, and, and that's on the one hand, super simple and stupid, but on the other hand, it's super hard and complex. And part of the thinking behind, please, your end users tell us what you want to hear about 
is precisely this thing to offer something which they actually care about instead of just, hey, here's another 10,000 question survey, have fun, please ignore us. That's because like, unless you give them an incentive to, to answer, they will not. Of course, like, why wouldn't they? Because they don't have an incentive. Like, it's almost tautologic. Um, so yeah, it, it's on us as someone, as a group who has been given a chance by Chero to ask questions and to, to get something channeled towards this community um, to come up with some value prop which they find valuable. Easy and super hard. I will say some of the end users have said, we're very happy to engage if we think that there will, our problems will actually be solved or there'll be value for us somehow. There'll be a reason why something we get out of it. There's willingness, but I think the next step is on you to decide what as a group you want to do. I wonder if uh, it would help to borrow an idea from economics where these surveys are done as part of a panel, which kind of repeats every so often. And part of the value proposition could be that these people you know, you can publish who's part of the panel and maybe some people would like that, that they might also help us develop relationships with these people uh, so that it's not just another survey they have to fill out, but this is a panel they fill out every three months or six months or what have you and make it feel more like you're part of something that you're contributing back to on a regular basis. Yeah, more of an ongoing discussion, right? Versus a nameless, faceless, double blind survey. Um, cool. Yeah, um, I'm an end user, right? Uh, I work for a bank um, and uh, uh, we, been trying to engage more with CNCF and other open source communities. And it takes a lot of work, right? In order to, uh, I'm the main facilitator, right? For CNCF and then trying to find the people inside of the organization. And they are all interested in participating, but the day to day and the operation really uh, restrain them from joining. But uh, it's an effort that I've been putting and uh, I've been able to engage some people but what happens in the day-to-day -day is that normally we rely on vendors, right? And the vendors, they are biased, right? They want, if they support a specific solution and they will normally recommend that way. And there is some sort of entropy because we, as end users, sometimes we don't know what's happening in CNCF and uh, maybe many people that use Kubernetes and some of these solutions uh, for observability uh, or service mesh they don't even know that about CNCF. They know about the tools, the solutions, and they don't know what's going on on the open source community. So I think there are different things, like there's a lack of awareness from the end user that there's a, a, a whole set of other alternatives. There's a community that are um, other solutions out there other than the ones that are, they are using or being supported by the, the, the vendors. I like the idea of webinars that people are drawn to enterprises and they participate and then join. I think it would be a good opportunity to bring awareness as well. Um, and I know that there are many companies that are part of CNCF and I think that would be another way maybe to engage the companies that are already paying for the membership to get more value out of it. Um, yeah, so these are some of the thoughts that I have. Uh, as uh, an enterprise trying to get more value, trying to be, not to be uh, locked in in a specific solution, but trying to find alternatives and still struggling getting the right resources within the company to join the community. So yeah, I didn't say anything like pinpointed any uh, specific problem, but just sharing some thoughts uh, from my perspective. No, I think that's very valuable. And part of, of the solution is for more 
for more uh, end users to to become part of those efforts. Um, of course, if I just had a quick look at, at at the attendance list, I mean Matt is also an end user, and everyone else uh, is basically coming from a vendor. And myself, ever since I joined Grafana, uh, I'm also not not working on something else at a day job and doing this in my free time, but now I'm also part of a vendor. So the, the inherent issue you have is most of us are working for a vendor somehow. And this, like, I, I'm, I'm convinced that everyone here is trying to do their best to be impartial, but yet uh, we, we all have our biases and such. So unless more truly, truly um, neutral people start joining and, and helping, um, we, we can't break this up. On the plus side, what we can repay you with is uh, more in-depth knowledge and, and being able to, to actually shape this in the way which you want as, as an end user. Oh, uh, point of order. I have a clash and I need to move that meeting, I know, but I, I have to jump to a customer call. I'm sorry. Uh, Matt, can I dump this on you and on, on you, Bartek? Sorry for- sorry. Yes, of course. I, sorry, see you. Uh, one, one thought that I have here, and um, <clears throat> I was actually thinking about putting this forward in, in app delivery as well. Um, we had usually a lot of project presentations um, in, in the past, the project reviews. Um, what I like, talking to people, they usually find interesting is more or less hearing it from other end users. So actively inviting end users on how they address certain topics or what they do internally and share this with other people, that's definite value. It's not coming from a vendor, it's coming from somebody who actually implements it. And people who have done it, there's, there's also a recording that I think a lot of people would watch. It's totally unbiased. This is how we run stuff. This is the problems that we have. This is what, how we are solving them. And, and as you're building, um, uh, building this up into like regular SIG type of presentations, um, this could definitely be helpful. And some people might be willing to speak. And from my experience from like other kind of user uh, groups or whatever you want to call them. Once somebody starts to talk about their personal experiences, other people will chime in and will join the discussion. It's just really taking the first, maybe two or three to, to, to present what they are doing. We have some people in the survey, they might be willing to, to have these discussions and that could lead to a, a value for a lot of other people out there. Yeah, I'm hearing. hoping that yeah, that, that's that's a great point, and actually, I'm I'm actually working on a blog post or two now, um, uh, for the coming quarter about what we're doing within my company as an end user. We're we're running a largely CNCF based stack, uh, and I'm hoping that we can build up a library of case studies and or blog posts that that we can curate it as a SIG and and not say, this is what you know the SIG says you should do, but here are some n examples of different um, uh, of ways that that actual people in the wild are assembling these various building blocks to meet their own requirements. Um, and so I think that's a, that, that's well put. And, and I think we can walk the line, you know, between, between providing examples um, and, and or quick, quick starts to, to, to play with some of these things for, for new, for new folks. Um, and maybe we'll have, you know, a snowball and then we'll start beating people away with a stick for lack of time. But, um, are there are there more uh, things on this topic, or, or should we move on? I think we've got a couple other things. I, there is a nice segue here. <laughs> I've actually I wrote the next one on the agenda. Um, I'd like to solicit recommendations for webinars. Um, now that we've got, I think each and every meeting we've had more uh, attendees uh, slowly growing from more from more companies than than the the previous ones. But I know Litmus is one that um, I personally haven't haven't used their project, but um, are, are there other uh, recommendations from, from folks on the call about who we might want to reach out to to set up some webinars or show and tells or, or something like that? And webinars would be about what? Like they're, they're presenting, um, for example, a new project that we, yeah, we, did, we hear a little about, for example. Yeah, like so, I might be projecting because I personally haven't used Litmus, but you know that's on the on the landscape, no, and we've got it. Um, I, I would love to get like, 
you know, what, 15, 20 minutes, half an hour, just whatever the right level of depth is about what the project is, what its goals are, how it works, and how you can engage, or something like that, something very focused, not necessarily on technical deep dives, we could do that too, but I think given where we are, just gelling the community around, you know, or maybe we, we, we just look at the landscape and just, you know, do do round robin from from yeah. all of the projects no, or something. I think that's a great idea. So, so something I mentioned on my blog post, right, is that we should definitely connect more people from, especially from the projects we are supposed to um, talk with and work with. And uh, we probably those those folks maybe don't know even that you know Seek Observer really actually exists. And uh, <laughs> we should invite like one project one by one and just get every project here and have. 20 minutes for, for that just to learn what is on their plate, what uh, problems they have and uh, what they do. And I'm pretty sure they should be happy to do that. So uh, let's, let's pick some project. If you picked Litmus, let's start with, with that and, and just ask them um, directly if they are happy to do so. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, and, and to be completely open and transparent, um, I just joined their Slack channel about 20 minutes before the meeting uh, and it's just the one that I haven't personally gotten my hands dirty with. So that's completely arbitrary. That's why if there's a better um, first couple or if folks here are, are from projects and, and, and would like to um, put, their, put their hat in the ring, please, please do. Okay. All right, well, I can take an action to reach out to the Litmus Project um, um, administrators or leaders uh, and, and circle back either in channel or in the next meeting if it takes that long amazing and and let's pick even another one and schedule even in advance to have it recurring i think this is oh this yeah is i'd like to curate a roadmap of them and just have them on a cadence that would be great yeah. and i think it would also help build trust within the community and just you know <clears throat> humans like novelty right if if uh in terms of community building like you know people will be more likely to join uh if we yeah. if we have a roadmap and we have a reason for people to come to learn new things yes um, I, I would be also maybe before we start actually asking people maybe we can agree what we can share in terms of what agenda we are expecting right because mm -hmm. i don't think we want to spend you know maybe 20 minutes in how to deploy it what amazing feature it gives we are oh gosh yeah what problems we they having what we can help with uh, or what they expect for seek observability to, to help them with, right? Maybe something on this tone as well. So what if we had a, a template, like a slide template yeah. that kind of, it's not too prescriptive, but it provides some guidance because again, we don't want just marketing. We don't, we don't want, you know, um, you know, architecture type stuff. Exactly, yeah. but, um, okay. Well, maybe that's a better goal for the next meeting for, for so maybe over the next two weeks, I'm happy to chime in, but, um, um, I can make a GitHub issue for it, or, or, and we can just track it. People can um, contribute that way. And um, again, uh, you know, if anyone on the call here has experience doing this in the past and has guidance, please feel free to chime in to the GitHub issue. I'll put it in the notes uh, a little later. Uh, does anyone else have other feedback before we move on? Okay. I guess the next one's uh, all, all you, uh, Artek. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't have too much to, to uh, too much of new status. I was on holidays, <laughs> but then we definitely move on our little project, um, Opslytics. Uh, let me link it again. So what is available right now is that you can take it, and it will work against. Uh, Thanos and produce you a parquet file. Um, and there is ongoing PR to it against uh, for remote tweet protocol. Um, so it will allow Prometheus to parquet file. And uh, this was kind of needed internally, but uh, um, like we are, we want to extend that and explore and experiment with different products as well. Different inputs, maybe, uh, maybe M3DB, maybe uh, Cortex is actually sort of channels, uh, but also different output uh, files. So if anyone needs some kind of app like this that will be kind of efficient, ideally, um, please join us. We're in a format. 
uh, and, uh, so, and sorry, and sorry, your audio was a little garbled for me. Did you say? Did you say Avro is the? I don't know if it's me or everybody. No, I think it's Barkitech. It's failing for me too. Okay. Well, while his ISP recovers, I could I could chime in that over the last two weeks, I said last meeting I would report back. Over the last two weeks, I said last meeting. Oh wow! Uh, can you mute Bartek? I think we're getting loop back. But right, anyway, um, uh, so what we've built, so at Everquote, we have our own anomaly detection um, backend that, that, that we've, anomaly detection. Um, that's worked off some custom time series uh, database and in the last two weeks. Uh, my update from there is we've, uh, we've now got an MVP working of using Prometheus data. Um, we basically just start with a PromQL query and hit our Cortex uh, deployments in our case, but it's just a PromQL endpoint. Um, and, and the actual analysis is still done on a copy of the data that's kept in a MySQL database. So, um, you know, we're, 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 we've added Prometheus as a time series and, and the folks that have built this service have been surprised by Prometheus and in particular some of the um, things that can be done prior to query time around setting up recording rules uh, to, to pre, pre, you know, the, 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 not to go too deep, but we, we've, we've got sort of the, the legacy pre, uh, 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 I, don't, I never know how to say it. it's obsoletics. Obsoletics is your new project. Um, uh, and so we, we would hope that in the next two to four weeks, once we've got more uh, at scale versions working of, of, of you know, not using this, uh, we could then have a baseline with which to compare uh, using this, this new API to, to go directly to Parquet. Uh, I, I suspect just in a hand waving back in the napkin perspective that it will be much more cost effective and performant. Um, uh, but we're happy to share those results as well. Hello, this is Ozan. This is Ozan. Yeah, hi. Hello, hello. Uh, I can jump in uh, from this uh, analytics case and offset six tool. Uh, Bartek uh, started uh, but uh, dropped. Uh, I think uh, he will try to say uh, there is a plan for the uh much much more performant way to uh do this uh, kind of file format converse, uh, convert uh, conversion uh if uh, there is apache arrow project uh it is uh, based uh, a memory model a common memory model which allows you to uh, easily convert then to a parquet file, pandas data frame, or uh, and Apache Spark. Uh, there is a, a plan for that. Uh, it is good to mention, I think. That's all. Yeah, are, are, you, are, are, that. are, are, were you saying that you yeah, have tools that do, this, that do this or that you have this requirement? Do this or that you have this requirement? No, I think Ozan is saying that uh, actually we are thinking that initially. Um, the problem is that this memory model, like it's really language dependent, right? Like if you're using Python, you are winning because Arrow is in Python. However, in Golang, those things are very, very um, uh, initial, let's say. Uh, there is some basic uh, support for it. Um, but the problem is it's not really portable between, you know, kind of processes and stuff like that. So, and that's why this arrow flight um, was proposed. And this is essentially a gRPC API. However, it's not well uh, introduced yet. And the main point behind, you know, our try with this obstetics is that first we need to establish what APIs people want. And once they start using it, then we can think how can we can optimize and scale it out. But you know, the, the, nothing was there even to start with um, to use Prometheus data in order to, to solve some analytic queries. Um, so once we have this connection, the plan is to you know actually find the pain, pain points, pain points, and and improve the scalability there. So let's start with something. Uh, but yes, there is definitely a way forward to make it more optimized if needed. So thank you, Ozan, for mentioning this. 
So uh, if folks want to use no. other, if folks want to use, I don't know where the echo is coming from. Is it me? Anyway, uh, if folks are wanted wanted to use other backends like Timescale DB or other things that support remote read, remote write, is it possible to 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 do that, or is this still is the current state that you really need to be using Thanos in order to to, to experiment with the API? Uh, it is uh, not uh, the Thanos related thing. Uh, it is currently a working project uh, in Apache uh, site. Uh, there is uh, some libraries uh, working. Uh, for example, uh, Apache Spark uh, merged that project to better support uh, uh, Pandas data frame conversion. Uh, it is uh, using in other community uh, project, we can say. Uh, but not integrated in our uh, site. We, uh, plan to uh, use or integrate to uh, our project. Yeah, I'm not sure if you are talking about the same thing, but uh, the essentially what was your asking here yeah, right now, Thanos and Prometheus are supported because this is what we, what input we need. However, yeah, I mean, it's very, it's just adapters, so we are essentially having all those formats from Thanos Prometheus into the data frame uh, in memory, and then we we just uh, output park it or fly it or whatever. And that's that's the current kind of idea. Um, so whatever arrow will improve Apache arrow, uh, we can definitely use in order to move to Panda and what maybe to other um, Spark and so on. So definitely we we are looking into those areas as well. Okay, thank you. I just heard. So, so it's, it's Apache yeah, Arrow, heard. not it's Avro. A, it's Apache Arrow, not Avro. Yes. Arrow, like, you know, uh, with the bow. <laughs> yeah, I'm familiar. It's a super cool, cool library. Uh, but yeah, I'm familiar. Like, it's a super cool library. Yeah, we are just ex experimenting. So please, uh, if you are in heavy need, for example, in some specific conversion, maybe... I don't know, like analytics on log lines or tracing or things like that. We are definitely uh, want to hear your feedback if you are even looking into areas like this. Cool. Um, I think that's all we had on the pre-done agenda. We've got a couple of minutes left. Um, open floor. Is there anything folks would like to announce, raise, discuss? Um, hi, this is Sunku. Um, so one of the topics in the or, or chat in the Slack was about discussing um, the link I posted with the OPNFE parameter project. I'm not sure uh, if you want to talk about it or if you have questions on that. Sorry, or if you have questions on that. Sure. Can you copy this uh, maybe link to, to the doc or something so we can see that? All right. Yeah, I think I posted it in the All doc. Right. Yeah, I think I posted it in the doc too. All right. But here I go. I'm, I'm just opening the doc. Here I go. I'm, I'm uh, yeah, I pasted it. Uh, just now. Yeah, I pasted okay. it. Um, so just to give you some context, um, so, so yeah, I work in the. Yeah, Bartek, can you mute uh, yourself? I think it's you. Bartek, can you mute yourself? I think it's you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, so pretty much, uh, work in the OpenAV um, uh, open platform for network function virtualization community. And uh, so one of the project in that community is Parameters, which focuses on monitoring and uh, uh, exporting the metrics uh, via uh, Prometheus or Influx and, and provide a better uh, monitoring um, reference solutions uh, to rest of the um, uh, NFE infrastructure. Uh, so within NFE infrastructure, we focus on OpenStack and Kubernetes based deployments. Um, so um, it, Within Barometer, we provided a, a reference example of how you could deploy uh, something like CollectD, for example, uh, with Prometheus and Grafana, how you could visualize various hardware metrics um, 
and uh, so we also our team uh, consists of like Red Hat and Intel folks mostly. Um, I, I work for Intel essentially. Uh, so we contribute to collect the Telegraph and looking into Node Explorer communities, uh, contributing various hardware plugins uh, and integration points uh, within these communities. Um, so the one-click install uh, link that I posted there uh, is just a set of Ansible scripts that you can deploy to have easy, um, you know, collect the influx and uh, Grafana stack. And now we're looking to provide a similar uh, deployment with Prometheus. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm open to questions if there is any, um, any discussion here. Yeah, I think we started this uh, similar discussions like uh, last maybe maybe two two meetings ago um, about having some essentially installation for demo purposes, right? So our idea was to essentially give people a way to quickly play around and experiment with with those things. Um, so that's our goal and. Uh, Definitely, we are looking into adding more projects as well, not only Prometheus. So the question here is that what's your goal behind all of this? Do you care about like one click installation of production deployment or just demo or um, and what exactly, you know, projects you want to have involved? I guess Prometheus only, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, looking at uh, more or less the observability stack overall, uh, I guess the main goal for us is um, Twofold. Uh, one is um, from an OpenAV community perspective, uh, the overall community is looking to provide a reference stack for uh, telco providers, service providers, and uh, operators um, so that they can deploy OpenStack or Kubernetes, have methodology to do lifecycle management and observability. So essentially to integrate our um, reference stack into that reference solution. And then um, telco service providers would use that reference solution to um, have it production ready uh, within their environments. So that's uh, OpenAV side of things. And other side, at least from Intel, um, you know, the customers we work with is uh, provide this reference stack where with a set of metrics and configurations where they can easily understand what is Prometheus, what, what kind of metrics they would get with Collect D, for example, or Telegraph and understand how would it would impact their production environments so that they can move on to uh, something like Prometheus or Collect D, that type of solutions. Um, so, so one is, uh, so essentially providing examples to the uh, uh, folks we work with as to what can be possible um, using this software. Using this software. Yeah, amazing. No, I think this is definitely a like similar, similar goal. I would, yeah, so the, so the key part is to make sure uh, you connect with people and you announce this uh, in the, I guess, Prometheus community, um, you know, some way of telling, hey, this is how you can contribute this and this is how we, I don't know, we are looking for tips, depending if you want to do it internally or, or, or so what, but it would be amazing to have essentially like teamwork on this uh, to enable reference architecture with Prometheus and then maybe others, other systems as well. Um, but looks like we are essentially looking on the metrics side for now. Um, so definitely, yeah. And and if you if you have that, then this can be used for for our demo purposes as well. Um, that makes sense. What exactly you are using for this? Uh, I don't know. One click installation. Is there any pattern technology? behind that any language or how do you construct those things how you deploy those things yeah currently it's a simple set of ansible playbooks sorry i could hear echo yeah it's ansible scripts um where you can uh, you know building docker containers with collect like, prometheus and grafana and with a preset of configurations preset of metrics uh, plugins so that you can deploy and visualize in uh, grafana what's going on um, on top of this, of course, yeah. we, uh, I, I also run the closed loop automation working group within OpenV. Um, so we're building solutions there, uh, you know, so, okay, how can you leverage Alert Manager? How can you leverage Kubernetes uh, extensions like telemetry or scheduler? 
um, integrate with Prometheus and how can you uh, leverage this for your um, VNFs or your container workloads, uh, low latency packet processing workloads. So that's again, we're building some reference solutions there. Um, but, so when you mention uh, provide this info in the Prometheus community, uh, of course I posted this in Slack, but how else would you suggest I share uh, some of the work going on? Yeah, sure. Uh, first, first of all, I think there is already Ansible, uh, uh, you know, um, how, how, how it's called, play playbooks or something for for Prometheus, and uh, we are using uh, that for our demo uh, Prometheus examples. So maybe it will be just easy as talking to 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 the right people, and um, they can share what they have and will be much easier to start with. So what I would do, I would go to Prometheus website and there is community section and then just choose the main English, uh, Prometheus dev probably, and um, just describe the same thing you describe on the Slack channel. And this is the main English, everyone just use it. So do that and hopefully we can connect you to the Ansible people. And um, yeah, looks yeah. that can, that might work. Definitely, yeah, it's a definitely a good start. Definitely, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, once once this is done, let us know, you know, how how it goes, and uh, we are definitely looking for some demo on how to, you know, how those 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 different projects looks like on 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 the for the telco, for example, use cases. That sounds exciting. Yeah, for sure. I'm hoping to be a regular to this meeting. Um, so as we have so, a couple of demos ready, so we could uh, share it here. Yeah, thanks. Thanks very much for um, your feedback and your contribution to the discussion. Um, I think we're just about out of time at which point the Zoom from the CNCF will arbitrarily cut us all off. So uh, we can we can leave the way we want to, or in about 100 seconds, we can leave the way Zoom will have us leave. But is there anything else um, that, that folks want to uh, give a shout out about before we're, we're cut off? All right, well, uh, with that, I hope everyone has a safe couple of weeks. Um, I guess I I'll see you online weeks. and uh, in two weeks. And thank you again for thank everyone you. that thank you gave feedback. Thank you. Thank you.